Thanks very much, Dugan. Um, thank and, you very uh, much. And uh, um, thanks for the kind introduction and for inviting us here. Um, I uh, greet you from the unceded territory of the Kakai people. Um, it feels very strange to be presenting the findings of a study that we first imagined five years ago and that was completed in fall 2019 before the pandemic. The pandemic has had a devastating impact on the hotel industry and on transit ridership. Um, but we think there are lessons from this study as we look forward to the recovery and beyond. For that reason, I'm going to ask you to keep two things in mind during our presentation. The first one is the study itself which shows that employer transit subsidies support a whole bunch of uh, positive public policy goals and make transit cheaper, support individuals to learn about transit, improve quality of life, all without disrupting business operations. And the second level concerns how we build the partnerships, the relationships, and the shared knowledge that can advance these kinds of innovative policy agendas. This study would not have been possible without our um, municipal government partner, the city of, New uh, of Vancouver, the Transit Authority, TransLink, the union, Unite, HERE, Local 40, and the employers, seven downtown hotels, including the four members of the Greater Vancouver Hotel Employers Association. Next slide, please. Coming into the study, the union and the employers at, four, at the four association hotels had already offered, uh, agreed to offer employees a 15% transit subsidy and they wanted to know how that was working. Um, the study was designed through three pairs of hotels and a seventh hotel where, um, where we also applied a, a, an experimental subsidy. And so in each of the three pairs, one hotel would stay the same, the other hotel would get a, 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 an experimental subsidy. Unlike other studies, we didn't try to do random assignment of individuals. Instead, we wanted to understand what happened in the whole workplace because that's how transit subsidies get negotiated and worked out between employee and employer groups. The bottom line finding is that transit subsidies do increase the likelihood of commuting by transit, and this change comes from reduced auto commuting. What else did we find, Steve? So one of the things that we examined was, how do hospitality workers use transit differently from other downtown workers? We found that they have irregular shifts, these are not nine to five office workers. They work both weekdays and weekends and commute before 6 a.m. and after 9 p.m. This means that the predictability and consistency of transit commutes throughout the day and even on weekends is important to them, as well as the fare structure costs, which have different zones depending on time and day of the week. But we also found that hospitality workers are already high users of transit and that there is a sweet spot in terms of distance from work. If they live too close to work, they will just walk. If they live far and require multiple transfers, they will use a car. As well, the cost of available parking spots was also a factor. Moreover, compared to the general population of Vancouver, hospitality workers were more likely to have commutes longer than an hour and less likely to have commutes shorter than 15 minutes. This raises issues of time poverty for this demographic. We also found that people with more regular shift times who immigrated to Canada, have children at home, and who rent, were more likely to accept the voluntary transit subsidy. As well, even within hotels, there were variations. Housekeepers were the most likely to accept subsidies, while management was less likely. And I found this part particularly interesting. So we were able to match participants between wave one and wave three, and found that people who changed their commute to include transit recorded decreased levels of stress, while those who stopped using transit recorded increased levels of stress, which starts linking well-being to the public health discussion on transit subsidies. Back to you, Peter. Thanks, Steve. So we've come away from this study with an understanding that there is a whole lot more to transit behavior, transit acceptance, uh, transit use, um, than simply the level of the subsidy. The level is important but non-subsidy issues such as awareness, eligibility, and parking and the parking offer at the place of work can all act as barriers to effective uptake um, of uh, a transit subsidy and to commute behavior change. Part of what was great about the way we did the study was that we were able to think through these policy choices and issues with our partners. And I really want to give a shout out to TransLink here 
which has the programs in place to support employer involvement in transit. I want to end where I started. Um, this study was about advancing a policy agenda, working with progressive employers, unions and governments. We were able to show that employer transit subsidies, which cost the taxpayer nothing, can work in a sector that we now realize has a lot in common with other essential worker sectors. Essential workers, people who need to be physically present in order to perform their duties. In that sense, hotel workers um, in Vancouver uh, in some way represent a, a future of employment um, in a post-pandemic world. Thanks for your time.